That's our new leaders right there. Big Silly! University of Montevallo, 2496. <laughs> National champions, Wallace State, Briar and Clinton. What's up, everybody? Welcome into the latest episode of the Rapala We Are Collegiate Bass podcast. We're back in the office following the first event of the season there at Kentucky Lake for the Bass Pro Shops Big Bass Bash presented by Berkeley. Today's guest on the show, winner of that event, Parker Brown from Dallas Baptist University, weighed in a bass weighing 7.21 pounds on day one, session three, presented by Bass Pro Shops. That fish held on to win the entire tournament on the conclusion of day two, took him over $7,500 in prizes. We wrote about all that information there on our website, collegiatebasschampionship.com. We'll go ahead and bring Parker in here. Man, dust is settled. You've been at home for a couple days now. Y'all have been out on the college trail for a really long time, you and your brother both fishing together to get that first major win and be in the headlines, go home with all those great prizes. Talk about the the emotions that you're feeling here just a couple days removed. Yeah, you know, uh, it hadn't really settled in yet uh, the day or two after, and then uh, we got back from the tournament, and I really took it all in. And um, we've done good in previous ACA events, and actually last Big Bass Bash, I caught a seven-pounder in practice, so we've been pretty close to winning uh, a couple times now, and just to bring one home is absolutely incredible, and I couldn't be more thankful. The pictures were awesome. We got to hand all the prizes out there on day two at Paris Landing State Park. Power Pole gift certificate, Bob's Machine Shop jack plate. You actually ended up winning two $1,000 Bass Pro Shops gift cards, one for the overall and one for the session win, an Ingle Cooler, TH Marine items, Berkeley Tackle Package, a Hydrowave H2, Abu Garcia Fishing Rod. Also topped on, on top of that was the Garmin Tournament Rewards for running Garmin Electronics and being the highest finisher in the event, as well as the ACA logo contingency. Real quick before we talk about lake and pattern and how y'all were catching them and things, man, how awesome is it to get all that stuff, no entry fee tournament, and to pay out over 7500 bucks and prizes, gift cards, and contingency payouts? Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, no other college trail does it like ACA. The amount of points and prizes that you can earn just by going to one tournament is incredible like you know like you said uh not even just the school of the year points but all the prizes like the hydrowave power pole and bass pro gift cards i mean i couldn't be more thankful to receive all of that and uh it was just crazy to get the win and be able to receive not just one a thousand dollar bass pro gift card but two of them so uh that'll really come in handy to for the next events to be prepared and just get some tackle rigged We'll talk about the next event on the schedule and the valuable school of the year points that you earned here in just a moment. Let's start with the lake and what was taking place there at Kentucky Lake last weekend. Anglers were doing a little bit of everything. It's I don't know if you could call it fall fishing. You want it to be fall fishing this time of the year when you go out to the lake, but it's still warm. They had drawn down the lake. The bass start to know, hey, it's about that time to get on the move and get up shallow and feed, and winter will be here soon enough. But with that in mind, what was y'all's game plan entering the tournament? You mentioned some past history there where you've caught caught them well in the past. Did yeah. Were you going off of some of that? Were you kind of going into it thinking we're just going to beat the bank and find them? What was the game plan entering the tournament? Yeah, so I'll break it down. In practice, basically, uh, we ran past stuff. And uh, as people know from fishing these past events on Kentucky Lake, usually you can just beat the bank, go fish a dock, and get a bite uh, pretty easily. But that wasn't the case in practice at all. So we had to change it up uh, drastically over the course of the couple of days of the tournament. And actually, the last day of practice is when we found the winning pattern. Um Usually when we go to Kentucky Lake, this would be our sixth time there, I think, this past time. So we've had some history on it. And um, usually it's a lot of dock fishing and rock fishing with crankbaits or flipping or whatever. And uh, this time we figured since uh, the lake was being drawn down for winter pool and it was still hot out, it wasn't your typical fall fishing, that the fish weren't on the banks, but they were somewhat near the creeks. So what me and my brother Layton focused on was fishing by the creeks, but at the mouth of the creeks where the bait was. So uh, I'm sure as all the anglers can tell you, you could see bait in any of the creeks you could go in and there would just be balls of bait, but the bass wouldn't 
they weren't feeding on them at the time. They hadn't moved up into the very backs of the creeks. And so we focused on shell beds is what we found in practice. Uh, the last day I caught a four pounder and uh, let it go right by the boat. And so it kind of keyed us in onto what the pattern was. And so we just kind of ran similar areas like that around the lake, just fishing shell beds. And uh, we were using crankbaits on the second day of the tournament. We were using the Berkeley square bull to trigger those bites. And uh, it just seemed like the crankbait banging off all the shell triggered reaction bites. And that's how I caught that seven pounder was just running a shell bed um, at the mouth of, of those creeks. Talk about the quality of the fish a little bit, because I know that on that first day you weighed in the 721 and not long after returning back out onto the lake, your brother caught another prize winning fish. I think that was in the four pound class. And you're, yes. talk, you're talking more about fish that you caught in practice that were quality as well. Some people mm -hmm. that went out there and fished the event might not have ever seen a bass over three pounds that weekend. And others were on quality fish as we saw. But when people were around those quality fish, I will say they were around multiples. Bethel had a couple teams that did really good in the first two sessions on both days and then yourselves catching a lot of those same size fish um mm -hmm. in decent numbers for practice and during tournament days what yeah. what were you seeing in the quality of the fish and why do you think that they were grouped up the way that they were yeah so like i said in practice it was super tough usually you could just go fish uh docks and get a bite you know every other dock but i mean we fished 50 docks probably one day of practice and only got one bite so we knew something had to change and uh when we started uh, targeting those show beds, actually, we found out that there weren't just one fish per spot. It was multiple fish, so they were setting up on those show beds really nicely. And um, so after I weighed in that seven pounder, which was awesome, uh, we got a camera guy in our boat, and then we went back to a show bed that we had fished previously in the day where we caught three off of it, and we pulled up there, and then I'd say the fifth or sixth cast Leighton catches that 456 and that it actually won third in uh day one session four so that was really cool too and i think it was just keying in on that pattern and taking a step back for a minute and uh thinking what are these fish doing you know like it's the fall time of the year but it's still hot the water temps were in the 80s and it's not your typical fall fishing so i think we really just patterned them better than most people we're talking with Parker Brown from Dallas Baptist University, winner of the 2022 Bass Pro Shops Big Bass Bash presented by Berkeley that was contested on Kentucky Lake just this past weekend. On day two of tournament competition now, we just got done talking about how y'all were around quality fish, had a good bite going through practice, and on day one. Day two, on the other hand, cameras in the boat, we're covering you guys, you're leading the tournament, and nothing really pans out. What do you think – happened did those fish just relocate and move did you catch them all kind of talk a little bit about the the psyche on day two and how things just didn't quite pan out and carry over from day one yeah so going into day two in the morning we were like okay we'll just run the same game plan and run these shell beds well we figured out that the fish had kind of shifted and weren't on them anymore and like all other tva lakes kentucky lake is on the tennessee river so it changes daily. The fish do not stay in just one spot uh, all day. They move overnight. And so we had kind of figured that out after catching turtles, sand bass, catfish. I mean, you name it. We caught everything but a bass. And so later in the day on day two, we kind of figured out that they had moved closer to the bank where we were previously not catching them. Uh, you could go down a rock stretch on a bank and pick up a bite or two. And I'm sure that's what uh, some of the fish weighed in on day two, those anglers were doing. And uh, it's pretty amazing how fish can just change overnight. But I'm sure glad that we found that pattern on day one and it worked out. Yeah, it's funny you say that. I was looking at the leaderboard once all the final standings were done. And just in the top five, I think it ended up being three of the top five big fish were caught on day one and two were caught on day two. And it's like those same guys, you, you like you said, maybe a deep bite was hot one day and a shallow bite was hot the next let's talk about school of the year points now for for the school of the year race we'll have the updated standings out here before the week's over for first place at this tournament you're in 1750 points i'd have to go back and look and see exactly where your next highest fish was it was probably actually the one that your brother weighed in so two pretty good fish for the weekend 
what does it mean for y'all? First ACA event, uh, probably one of the first double points events the Dallas Baptist has gotten to compete in the season to be able mm-hmm. to come out with a good amount of points to kind of jumpstart this 2022-23 race. Yeah, so unlike uh, other colleges, this was actually our first big event of the season. We were just getting our season kicked off. And so we were pretty far behind in the points. So we knew it was crucial to have to earn some points at this one or else we would be really far behind because like Adrian and all those top five teams, they had already fished some previous uh, tournaments and were pretty far ahead in the points. So we knew coming into it that we would have to do good to have a shot to even compete in the top 10 school of the year. And as you saw from the uh, preseason poll from ACA, we were ranked in the top 10. And usually we do DBU finishes in the top 10. And uh, this year we're shooting for the top three, as you saw in my uh, preseason poll quote. But uh, And I think that can happen if we just fish hard and keep fishing all these ACA events and being productive. But, I mean, 1,750 points will go a long way uh, in the end for DBU, and I'm really glad that we uh, were able to put that together. Yeah, you talk about where y'all are currently ranked. I typically, when we're talking about the top of the standings, and I'm alluding to who's leading and stuff like that, we'll we'll put in the article what the school was ranked. You know, Parker Brown from X ranked Dallas Baptist, and I looked through the top 25, and y'all weren't there. And I didn't even I didn't go any further to see exactly where y'all were. But since we're in the top 25, I didn't list it. But it is interesting because I think you yourself, and then as I was listing a couple of other teams, Bethel University maybe too wasn't in the top 25 yet. That's definitely subject to change here as the season goes on and more events start to take place. The next one on our tournament schedule, also one of the next major ones in all of collegiate bass fishing, I do believe, is the AFCO Collegiate Bass Open, October 8th and 9th at Lake Darnell in Russellville, Arkansas. Registrations open for that tournament. CollegiateBassChampionship.com. Make your way over there. Get signed up for that. We promoted it on social media today. We'll have more information in the coming days about that as well to promote it and get everybody excited. Talk a little bit about that event. Another one that you have some history at as we go there each year on the ACA and the Bass Pro Shops Collegiate Bass Fishing Series. Kind of know what to expect. It's the same time of year each year. May have had a cold front. It may still be hot and kind of late summer pattern like you were experiencing at Kentucky Lake. Talk about what you're looking forward to going into this tournament here to kind of wrap out the fall on the ACA trail. Yeah, me and my brother have fished uh, the Bass Open for Dardanelle through ACA the last two years, so we have some history on it. And um, Dardanelle is actually one of my favorite lakes to go fish at for fishing shallow fall patterns, so it sets up perfect for the beginning of October. And uh, – You'll be looking for fall patterns there, definitely, Uh, more as Kentucky Lake was still summer patterns. Dardanelle will definitely be fall patterns as the water starts cooling off, so that should be a fun event. Uh, We did good last time there last year, and I think I caught a a four-and-a-half pounder on day one. And, uh, you know, it's just – it's a tough fishery at times, but once you get them patterned out for the fall, it should turn out to be a great event. Yeah, it's one of those that for me, myself, when I was in college, it was only like an hour and a half, two hour car ride down and same back. Mm-hmm. And so it didn't take very long for us to get on there and fish it and have a little bit of experience, did well at a tournament there and back in the college days. But during the spring or the fall, really, I feel like Darnell offers a lot. It's their shallow vegetation, shore grass, some lily pads in different areas. Like you said, it's pretty shallow, so it eliminates any yeah whatever little deep structures out there so everybody's up on the bank there's riprap there's bigger rock in certain portions there's flooded timber what do y'all like to do 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 you go out there and say man i like to fish this way i'm going to go find them on this and do that or do you listen to the fish and adjust based upon how they sit up because this one too as we've seen in years past just like what happened to you guys at kentucky lake hero and zero they're there one day and they're gone the next. It happens out there on the Arkansas River at Lake Darnell as well. We had it play out last year where the guys at Tennessee, the fish shrunk a little bit on day two and they lost their their commanding lead. And the year before that, Drury had a close to 20-pound bag, weighed in like six or seven pounds on the second day and barely squeaked out the win. Yeah, it's definitely not an easy lake to figure out. It's one of the more tougher ones of the season. But Darnell does offer a lot of cover, so you can go fish basically your strengths, whatever you want. There's rocks, there's dock, there's pads, grass, anything. So usually what me and my brother like to target is the grass at Darnell in the fall because that's what holds the bait. And 
once you find the bait, that's kind of what the bass will key in and on to. They'll be in that same area. Like Kentucky Lake, I had mentioned there was bait up all in the creeks, but the bass weren't eating them yet way up there. But at Dardanelle, it should be the opposite. The bass should be up there in the creeks feeding on the bait. So I think uh, just targeting those past history areas and where bass like to set up in the fall will be really key for that event. Last question here before we let you go. So let's talk about what a successful week would look like for y'all at Lake Darnell. You just came off a really good event at Kentucky Lake, going to the Bash now. You, the championship qualification that you earned for yourself, that's from the Big Bass Bash. There's going to be more on the line here at the AFCO Open with an opportunity for five more places to get even more boats for schools like yourselves that can send a few more if you get those qualification spots. Talk about what a successful week looks like between – where y'all finish in the standings in regards to school of the year points once we leave Darnell, championship qualifications, prizes, you name it. What are you going to be looking at to leave Russellville in a little over two weeks and say, man, that was a good two days? Yeah, so I'm hoping that one of our DBU teams can figure them out and get the pattern going because once you get the pattern going, you can replicate that on other areas of the lake. So I'm hoping that uh, the bass are in that fall transition like they should be and we can squeak away with a top 10 finish. That's probably my goal. Um, since we have history on that lake, we kind of know the areas that they like to group up in, and uh, it should be a fun event. We're looking forward to it, and I know most of the other colleges are looking forward to it too. Awesome, man. We can't wait to get there. Like we said, AFCO, AFCO Collegiate Bass Open will have a bunch of information, updates, lake previews, school of the year points will be updated prior to that. Just a lot going on. The fall's become a busy part of the season. It used to be the spring was nonstop. It feels like the fall's that way now, too, which is really good. A lot of growth happening in collegiate bass fishing. A lot of more information to come out on our website next week changing landscape of collegiate fishing we're making some adjustments to the bass pro shop school of the year presented by abu garcia for the remainder of this season so be on the lookout for that we'll get this podcast posted here at the end of the week parker thanks for joining us here on the show man we'll see you guys at yeah. Lake darnell in just a little over two weeks sounds good thank you kyle Fishing is all about connecting with nature. Then grabbing nature by the lip and holding it up for a picture. To fishermen and other liars, the time you spent on the docks banks, the boats, the lines you cast, and the hooks you set. These moments you share with the people you love, the fish you never forget, and the tales that get taller with every retelling. Make memories that'll last a lifetime with Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here.